Hey, Larry Mednick here with Evolution Aircraft. Uh, we produce the Revo and uh, the uh, rest of the product line, starting with the uh, Revs and our uh, big off-road Revolt as well. But uh, back when I was a little boy, uh, my dad used to take me to uh, the Great Lakes Dragway, the drag strip for uh, every Labor Day, every Memorial Day, watch the jet cars. And uh, the one thing I can remember still to this day is a fellow that uh, would fly up and down the drag strip with his little Quicksilver, a little single seat Quicksilver. And I would watch that, that little airplane. I think I went to the drag strip to watch that little ultralight fly back and forth, up and down. And he'd go all night long and the jet cars would be going and uh, boy, when it was all over, all I could think about was that little ultralight. So I've always been just fascinated with ultralight since I was probably three or four years old. And uh, then when I turned seven, I got the biggest disappointment of my life. Uh, my dad had started taking lessons in a uh, Cessna 172. And so I had very, very high expectations of how awesome it was going to be to finally fly. And I got in the plane and uh, the end result is I got air sick. But ultimately I was hot. I couldn't see over the instrument panel. Uh, it just wasn't anything like what I thought the ultralight was, what I was after. And it really, uh, really broke my heart a little bit. So my dad flew all through my teen years, and well, he still flies. Uh, in fact, we're standing uh, across the taxiway. It's his 172 till this day. Um, but I don't fly in it very often with him uh, still. Anyway, uh, when I was 25 years old, my dad decided he was going to buy an M squared, which is very, very close and similar, but with two seats, so even better to the uh, Quicksilver, and I just couldn't have been more excited. I went to Sun and Fun to pick up the M squared, and uh, we were there. Uh, I was looking around at just, uh, just complete information overload at Sun and Fun. It was awesome. Trikes were everywhere. A lot more manufacturers back then, actually. And I thought they looked really, really cool, but hey, I was there to pick up this M squared, uh, this Quicksilver uh, style aircraft with my dad, and uh, that's what we did. Uh, my first flight in it exceeded my expectations of what I thought flying an ultralight should feel like. I couldn't get the grin off my face. I couldn't sleep that night. I just wanted to fly, and I did. I flew every day. Uh, I round up, I think it was 331 hours my first year in that M squared. And uh, I was loving it so much, but I felt bad. My dad had soloed me in it. I was flying it a lot and I felt like I was wearing it out on them. So I was shopping for my own. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to go into. Um, I was definitely looking at another fixed wing style aircraft or maybe another M squared because I like that one so much. And a gentleman came to the airport, he had a, uh, a trike. And so I kind of went up to him and I asked him about it. And this is going back 20 years ago now. So the 912 engine, the big four stroke that we find in all the light sport aircraft was not widely used on things like Quicksilvers and M squares and CGS Hawks and some of the smaller uh, tube and fabric style airplanes. So he had a 912 on this trike and I asked him why he would spend that kind, kind of money on a trike. And I saw the trike honestly as something inferior that wasn't as good as a stick and rudder style aircraft or maybe something for people that just didn't want to learn how to fly a real airplane. That was my impression. And uh, he looked over at our M squared uh, and uh, he looked back at his, uh, his trike and he says, come on, let me take you up in this and show you where the fun's at. So I, I really thought that, uh, that he had it all wrong. And the moment it le left the ground, something in my heart, I mean, it was just love at first flight. I mean, instantly, within the second it left the ground, and I haven't looked back. It's been 20 years of flying the trikes, uh, almost at 8,000 hours now in, in weight shift control, and I uh, just haven't stopped. So I had my first trike for a whopping four months, and uh, there was a long list of things I didn't like about it. Uh, just wanted a little bit more, so I bought another model, and uh, I flew that for a year, and then I had a long list of needs and wants, and then I bought another model, and ultimately, um, we were kind of almost in a search for something that had a bigger back seat, more headroom, uh, could go a little bit faster, uh, had better brakes, better suspension, bigger tires. These are some of the things that wound up on this, this list, this quest, if you will. And it was actually my original partner, uh, Abed Faruqi, that came across a picture of a, an Apollo Delta jet. And uh, it was really hard to track down. It was a Hungarian built machine that had been discontinued as it turned out. And uh, so we called the factory up. 
um, and it looked very similar to the Revo we were just flying, and, uh, but it was a little bit smaller. So we called up the factory, they told us it had been discontinued, but they had the tooling to make it, and if we really wanted one, they could build us one. Well, I think it was discontinued because they never quite got some of the systems correct. Uh, so we received it, it was borderline unflyable to be honest, and uh, we made a series of uh, 62 changes. We documented all of the changes uh, when we were done with it, and we had a product that was really, really nice. It flew well, it looked great, everything about it pretty much was there, with the exception that it was very small. Uh, so a lot of the American pilots that were 200 pounds plus couldn't fit in the front seat. Uh, the back seat was almost a definite no-go if you weighed more than 160 pounds. So we wanted to build a bigger aircraft. Uh, I flew to Hungary to work with Apollo and uh, we developed something called the Monsoon. And that machine hit all of the parameters we were looking for. It proved to be a huge success in the United States. We sold 27 of them the first year. And we had a little bit of a supply and demand problem. Uh, we were backed up for over a year on orders. We just couldn't quite get them as much as we needed them. And uh, that prompted us to start building a version of that in the United States. Uh, we took it to another level. Um, we knew that we couldn't compete on price, but we wanted to take the aircraft up a level. And what I mean by that is we wanted to use CNC instead of welded brackets. We wanted to use a welded chromoly frame instead of a bolt together aluminum frame. We wanted to use aircraft tires instead of motorcycle tires, aircraft brakes instead of motorcycle brakes. And the, the list went on and on and on. And uh, I think what we wound up doing was building the most expensive trike the world had ever seen. And um, you would think that nobody would buy it, but the Revo was uh, for many, many years the number one selling trike in the United States, right up until I had another idea. And that idea was we had kind of conquered the go-fast trike with the refinements of uh, roll trim and speed trim and synthetic vision and uh, the 100 mile per hour cruise. We had customers flying them across the United States. Uh, in fact, we, uh, my wife Amy's flown uh, twice from Florida to Oshkosh, Wisconsin solo for that air show with her Revos. And uh, so we had done that. And uh, the new idea was to build an off-road machine that could go in and out of a trailer in six minutes, could take a 300-pound guy in the back seat with no problem, plenty of space, bigger tires, bigger braking system, um, less, uh, less uh, wind protection, but at a slower speed, which equaled more visibility and uh, just more interaction with uh, nature for low and slow flying. And uh, the Revolt unseated our flagship Revo a couple of years ago and is now the number one selling aircraft in the United States. So the uh, Revo and the Revolt are uh, two of the two seat machines. So those in the United States are not gonna be considered an ultralight. They're too heavy, they're too fast. And they are a light sport aircraft, just like many of the other uh, airplanes on the uh, Mojo Grip. Um, the certification for the pilot is almost the same. It's just, it is an actual different rating. It's a weight shift control. So for anybody, by the way, that has a private pilot license or a fixed wing sport pilot license, they can do an add-on rating for the weight shift control, very similar to doing like a tailwheel add-on rating uh, for the uh, airplanes. But uh, to, these aircraft are certified. They're ASTM compliant. And there's a series of design uh, features they need to have load tests that need to be done, um, quality assurance programs that need to be enforced and followed, um, all kinds of, lots of paperwork with these types of aircraft. And uh, lucky enough to have a couple guys in the company that uh, this is something that they do. They actually outsource to other companies uh, and have certified aircraft like Sea Ray and uh, Legend Cub, some of the other different projects that are out there. And uh, we actually work in this building uh, together, so it's really great to have some of the best guys in certification that uh, really uh, know thoroughly the, uh, uh, the process of uh, ASTM and light sport certification. So the Revo comes standard with a 100 horsepower engine. It is a heavy uh, 700 pound machine. It is a fast machine at 100 miles per hour. It uses all of that horsepower. It weighs very similar to a lot of the uh, fixed wing LSAs that are on the market also using a 100 horsepower engine. So it really requires that, that uh, horsepower to make it perform well.
Now our Revolt is a little bit lighter, about 100 pounds lighter, and uh, has uh, some larger wings. And so the Revolt can actually do a 65 horsepower motor with just the largest of the wing selection, an 80 horsepower motor with some of the medium sized wings, and then still requires the 100 horsepower to fly with the smaller wing packages that we offer for the Revolt. So the way I explain it is the trike is really the skateboard of the industry. Uh, if you go up to some kid that's got a skateboard and uh, he's really into a skateboard and you show him a bicycle and tell him, look, this bicycle, you can go a lot further, you can go a lot faster, it goes over the bumps better than your little skateboard wheels. And uh, you try to take a skateboard from him and hand him the bicycle, he'll hit you over the head with a skateboard and take off. He, he wants the skateboard, it's a fun thing. And the utility of the skateboard, the utility of the trike is very, very low. They're not the fastest, they don't have the largest cargo capacity, but if you truly want to fly for fun and you really want to experience more flying than getting there, the trike is, in my opinion, just a much, much better vehicle. So a lot of our customers that own trikes also own airplanes, some of those people own jets, some of them own turbine helicopters, but they still fly a trike because nothing else feels like a trike in the air. So our trikes actually start at 20,900 for a little Rev Ultralight, and a lot of those well-equipped Revs do wind up at 25, even over tipping the scale at $30,000. And so that's our single seat Ultralight. Uh, our Revos can reach $120,000 with all the options. You know, when we're designing a, a new product and we're focusing on what that product should do, uh, to be honest with you, cost is pretty much the last thing on our agenda at Evolution Aircraft. We're looking at the very best components we can use. So for example, the batteries that we use, we use an Earth-X lithium battery. It's a $380 battery that goes in. We're using stainless steel braided brake lines on the brake systems. Um, everything we're using, there's always a cheaper way to do something. But when we can make the part out of CNC, uh, when we can make the parts more durable, you know, the tires that go onto a Revolt are $300 a piece with the inner tubes. So, Cost is not what we're after, and I'm the first one to tell somebody when they call on the phone if they're looking for something more economical that they should really look at sometimes brand X, Y, or Z, or better yet, even a used aircraft uh, of various brands. But uh, what we're really after is the very highest quality we can put into the aircraft, and we do build in its class the most expensive of each category. So sa safety to us is extremely important and one of our design parameters with uh, the Revo, the Revolt, is that we weren't just building a consumer level vehicle, we were looking for a commercial application. So what that means is we're using, for example, three quarter inch hardened chromoly axles as opposed to five eighths steel axles. And the reason for things like that is so that when a student has hard landing, we don't want the aircraft to be down. We need it to keep going and take the next student and the next student. If you look at like the hang block assembly that attaches the wing to the carriage, we're the only ones in the industry using a half inch Jesus bolt as it's called as opposed to a 3 8 bolt. If you look at the hang block assembly itself, it's a five pound CNC uh, assembly. It has half inch walls versus quarter inch walls. So a lot of uh, the rest of the world in particular that looks at Americans in general as always overdoing things with our diesel pickup trucks and our Cadillacs and uh, our big cars. They look at some of our, our machines and say, wow, your machines weigh more than all of our brands that we have here in, in our country and uh, your engine, you have to have a bigger engine and you're burning a little bit more fuel. So fuel economy and weight were definitely things that we put last. What we put first is we build a more robust machine. We put more horsepower into it. We designed the wings to fly at 1160 gross versus our competition using 950 pound gross wings. The whole machine's lighter, so they both have the payload, but one is built like a diesel pickup truck one is built like a mid-sized truck. So everything's just a little bit bigger on our machines. So when somebody uh, gets a trike, uh, they have their choice basically of training in their own machine, uh, which works out really well, or you can train in one of our machines. It would uh, generally take more than 10 hours and hopefully less than 20 hours to transition either from a fixed wing or a helicopter, or if you have no experience at all, 
Usually the fixed wing uh, guys are going to have a little bit more trouble the first few hours than somebody that's never flown before, but then the pilot skill comes back around towards the end and can really help out where they understand what a flare is all about, they understand if they're lined up with the runway. So there are things that will help a fixed wing pilot to fly a weight shift, but those things do not help during about the first five hours, they're more of a hindrance. So in both cases, about 10 to 20 hours of dual instruction. And then uh, if you already have the license, we do the add-on rating. If you're a non-pilot altogether, you're looking for that solo endorsement so you can go fly for 90 days by yourself. So a common question is if you learn to fly a trike where all the controls are completely opposite of an airplane, push forward uh, to slow down, uh, left to bank right, on the ground you push with your right foot, it turns left, everything is backwards. Can you switch back and forth between the airplane and the trike? And the answer is a real quick yes. It's not an issue to go from one to the other. In fact, if you fly a, uh, an aircraft with a yoke, you'll realize that if you're holding the yoke with your right hand and you'd like to bank the aircraft right, you're going to move your hand down. If you switch hands on the same yoke and still want to bank right, you're going to move your hand up. So, so long as you understand that the pivot point has changed to the other side of your hand, you're not going to bank the plane the wrong direction. In the case of the trike, the pivot point is simply above your head as, abo uh, as opposed to below your seat. As soon as you've mentally digested that concept, it's just where's the pivot point? And getting one aircraft to another, not an issue. So we're evolutiontrikes.com and also Evolution Trikes on Facebook. One of the things that I'm really proud of is uh, if somebody is interested in an aircraft, we don't send out custom quotes. All of our pricing on, is on the website. Uh, you can just click off options. It'll pull up the actual uh, cost and you can play with different options, find out what you want, how much the aircraft's gonna cost. Once somebody wants to order the trike, uh, we require a 50% deposit and then the aircraft is going to take somewhere between 10 and 12 weeks generally. Sometimes we get backed up and it's uh, like right now we're about 14 weeks and it just is based on uh, you know how many orders we have in the pipeline. So our, our latest model is called the Rev-X. Uh, sounds a lot like the Rev. Uh, one of your earlier uh, videos you did with my wife Amy, she talked uh, quite a bit about the, uh, the Rev Ultralight which is one of our really popular models. And one of the limitations of the REV is that uh, we weren't able to really fly it in high winds. Uh, the middle of the afternoon with a lot of thermals, it was more of a morning and evening flyer. And so I can honestly say some of my best flights to date over the last 20 years, I've flown about every type of airplane and trike out on the market, including obviously all of our own products, but that REV is just awesome to fly when it's calm out. So I've had some epic flights in it. And unfortunately, if you look at my logbook, I don't have very much time flying the Rev because when I'm ready to fly, it's 1130. We flew at 1130 today, perfect example. By the time you're ready to fly, maybe the conditions aren't really ready to fly something that requires dead still air. So with that being said, we wanted to develop and we did uh, a Rev version not an ultralight anymore, something that's going to weigh about 400 pounds, same size, same look, big engine, small wing that would be able to go fly in 20 mile per hour winds with ease. And we did it. And that is the Rev X. So the Rev X uses a 582, 65 horsepower engine. It has a 10 gallon fuel tank. And uh, this machine has a small enough wing that uh, it can go up and fly pretty much any time you'd take up any other type of light sport aircraft or certainly any time you'd fly a Revo. The Rev-X only comes in an experimental and uh, it's an EAB so it's uh, licensed a lot like the uh, gyroplanes are uh, certified and that means that it's a builder assist program but it's a pretty pretty easy to put together a little aircraft. So the Rev-X comes with almost all of the options that are kind of an a la carte with the, uh, the Rev where you're adding things like a dolly cart, you're adding things like a color display. The Rev-X comes with all of those things and more and is $35,900 whereas a Rev-X is $20,900. By the time you comparably equip a Rev Ultralight just with the same features, you're closer to $30,000 on a Rev. This one you're at $35,900. And things like the wing is a big difference. The Rev uses a true ultralight wing. So when you look at the cables that are on it, when you look at the wing struts that are on it, 
it is a completely different construction than what's on the RevX. The RevX uses heavy duty airfoil tubing that you would find on something like a Revo. It uses 3 16 inch cable. The fittings that are on it are all like a two place wing. So you're looking at a 110 pound wing versus an 80 something pound wing. And uh, you know, all those things add up to just a little bit more money, but a lot more capability.